We thank you, Father, Lord God, that you've made it possible for us to come again. Thank you for the service. Thank you for the singers. Thank you for the leadership. We appreciate you, Father, for the presence of God in our midst. We sanctify your great holy name, O oh Father, for this great time, O oh God. You are leading in the fight. You never just fought for us at Calvary and left us. There is another part of us that you are also involved in. That is the area we want to identify you and honor you for the same. We appreciate you this morning for your mighty grace that you've given us, Lord. We want, Father, to have the confidence in the work you did at Calvary and have confidence in what you are doing today. Father, we are standing with the needs of your people. We are bringing our needs because we believe you answer prayers. You wouldn't have given us prayers as the means to access what you've already given us in the spirit if you do not answer prayers. Our sister Joseph that has requested for prayers, Heavenly Father, give her the prayer request she has. Promotion and enlargement for our children. And any other person, Father, even online, Father, people are making decisions. We want to remember them in this prayer, Father. Those all of us who are here again, oh God, we want, Father, to thank you. We know you're going to grant our needs. Amen. That is what inspires our faith. To know we deal with the God that answers prayer, that comes to encourage, to comfort, and console us. We lift your name in glory for your own name's sake, Lord. We appreciate you this morning as we read the scriptures. Father, may you help us to put emphasis in the right places. That, Father, we may not get everything you are telling us, but you'll get something that will open the rest. Give us that grace we need in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go to our scripture reading today. And it seems like, uh, I don't know whether we are able to finish our series on those words because as we keep on moving, a word comes up, a word comes up. And uh, we want to deal with one of the words that was not among the words uh, I mentioned. But uh, I, I came to, to learn of something that was very encouraging for me. That saying, there is no book in the Bible, the people have been, the statistics. That saying there is no book in the Bible that has led many people to Christ than the book of Romans. Not only by preaching, even just people reading it, yes. even Martin Luther, yeah. it was the book of Romans, and he got only a small word called justification. Amen. And that's what we're talking about Protestants today. And then uh, Lu uh, Wesley came with another word, sanctification. Then we had another man by the name John Calvin, or oh, some of them went on the limb. He came with the word predestination. When we are talking about recovery of precious words in the Bible, when those words are recovered, our identity in Christ is recovered. Amen. Then they say the next book is the book of Revelation. You know, the book of Revelation is like an outline of a horror movie. You know, a, 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 a dragon with ten heads, another one has got seven heads, another one has got ten, another one, you know. But it says it has also played a part in leading people to Christ. Yeah, the best of the things is to come to Christ. He will give you the rest that you need to understand. Thank you, Grace. You are, we are happy to see you there, there too, Grace. Amen. Thank you. Let's go to our scripture reading this morning. Today we are dealing with the degrees of glory at the Bema seat of Christ. Bema or Bema. That word is the judgment seat of Christ. Degrees of glory. Glory is not just like a garment like you put on like righteousness. Degrees, glories, or glory has degrees. You know, righteousness, you will be you will not be more righteous today than you will be tomorrow. Amen. You will not be righteous today than you were yesterday. Righteousness, it was the righteousness of God, you achieved it, and that is where you are. But there is another scripture that says perfecting holiness. But I'm talking about glories. When I talk about glories, I'm not talking about here. I'm saying people have gone up. God feel good to see you. Let's, let's go to our scripture reading. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. 1 Corinthians 3, 9 to 15. 2, 5, 10. Don't worry. We are not reading them at the same time. Readings from uh, many brothers who have spoken to me. Some of them are requesting for prayers. They want to make decision and the question has been i've seen this but i don't know what to do you understand the need is great someone say on his own he say i've seen this i don't know what to do but we are trusting our salvation is god who gave it to us 
God will do the rest of the other things. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4.17 You know, when there are two books, sometimes you can go to 1 Corinthians and uh, you're wondering what I'm reading is not what you're seeing. It says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You see the word there, exceeding and eternal weight weight of glory. That word weight is like these things are put on on the scales. Your affliction are put on the scale this side. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the glory is also put on the scale on the right side. Then Paul is saying what we are going through cannot be compared to the exceeding glory that we are going to get, is going to outweigh it. If I was here, I would be quiet. But we shall go together with you to see what Paul went through. And you'll tell me whether that was really, he calls it what? Light affliction. None of you have suffered like Paul. But he says, light affliction. Paul was looking for something ahead. Something beyond what was taking place in his life. And I think when we look at things like Ruth, we see beyond widowhood there is something. But you don't want to stay back like Opa that never saw anything beyond the present suffering and the challenge she was going through. She went back because she didn't see anything beyond. We just pray that God open our eyes to see something beyond what we are going through. And it's going to be a great encouragement to all of us. Amen. And we shall see in the Bible how Paul arranged those things. After he has spoken about this affliction, he's calling present, he goes to the glory. And I'm praying that God gives you grace Amen. to be able to see it. Amen. Brother Godfrey, you read for me. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 9 to 15. As I read 2 Corinthians 5.10. Let me read this as you look for it. It says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad. He is not talking about, and I think for, 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 for many years, many people have used this to say we are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. This judgment seat of Christ is not the, the throne of a sinner. That's why Paul is included. He's saying we shall all stand at the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ is what we call Bema or Bima. We shall all stand at the judgment seat of Christ to receive what we did in our bodies. This is not talking about salvation because salvation is what Christ did for his body in his body. But this is something you did in your body whether it be good or bad. Amen? Amen. Paul is using words that no one knew such a words existed. That there was another judgment seat of Christ unless we get it from the prophetic program what God promised Israel which we shall do. It says, Now therefore, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men that we are made manifest unto God and I trust also are made manifest in our consciences. Now you're going to go to your scripture reading. First Corinthians 3, 9. For we are laborers together with God. We are God's husbandry. Sometimes you read the scriptures, we don't focus on it. He's saying, we are laborers with God. Amen. Continue, just continue. 
For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. What does he say? You are the farm of God. Amen. You are the building of God. Amen. And he's saying that is where our area, that is where our occupation is. Amen. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work. It is the fire to try every man's work. For what sort it is. Yes. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon. So the purpose of the fire is to try the work. To see which one is going to abide. Amen. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon. He shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall so be So the thing that will stand the fire of God has already been mentioned. Amen. It is gold, silver, or precious stone. Amen. So the person whose work is categorized in these basically three, but even more, because we are all precious stones, Amen. then this person will receive reward. Amen. Amen? Amen. Okay. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. So there is the burning of your works. That's why we have read it says, we shall receive what he did in our bodies, be it good or bad. So God, good is the precious stones, gold and silver. Amen. Bad is wood, hay, Amen. and stubble. Amen. That is what will burn. Amen. 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 If any man's works shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved. Yes, so as by fire. So the person shall be saved, isn't it? Yes. But he is not going to have anything to him. Amen. But is he in heaven? Yes. So how can we say we are the same? I'm not talking about you and me. I'm saying according to the scripture, we are not the same then when it comes to the judgment seat of Christ. Because there is a man whose work is going to burn in fire and another one is going to abide the fire because of the material it was built on. Okay. You may be seated. Wait, which scripture did I read first? I think I went ahead of myself. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4. It's the same thought. Let's begin verse 1. It says, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of a man's judgment. Yeah, I judge not my own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet I'm not here by I'm not here by justified, but he that judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time. You, see, you understand the kind of judgment he's talking about? Because there is a judgment where we shall all stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. And until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of their hearts. And then shall every man have a praise of God. Amen. Can someone read for me and I view what I'm saying? Okay, I have it here. Don't worry. Five, it says, Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. Are you seeing that one secret? There is the motives of the heart. Amen. And at that time, each will receive their praise from God. These are the people that God is going to. My brothers, you do not know what happens when God says, well done, my servant. 
he does not say, well done, my son. Amen. Because he knows you have relationships with him. Amen. He knows you are related to him as a son. You are related to him as a servant. And at one given time, you are related to him in a way as an enemy, but that time you are a sinner. So this time when Jesus Christ talks about servants in the gospel, he says, this one that has done this shall be told, well done, my faithful servant, enter into the joys of your Lord. Amen. He's not saying, well done, my son. He's saying, well done, my servant. That means it is talking about service in a Christian life. Amen. And when we are talking about service, that is the reason we are talking about standing at the Bema seat of Christ. Let me go through this very fast with you before we go to some other things. First, I want you to identify that several thrones where people shall stand and they are all different in the scriptures. In the book of Matthew chapter 25, Jesus says, when the Son of Man shall come with all his glory, with his angels, and shall sit on the throne of his glory. And before him shall gather all the nations. So he's gathering at the throne of glory. The nations. Amen. Are you seeing how the Bible is meticulously put together? Amen. The people who shall gather at the throne of glory are the nations. Amen. And the basis of judgment is outlined the way they dealt with the brethren of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen? Amen. You are not going to be found there unless you are nation ben Ami. And nation ben Ami at one given time was given a chance to deal with Israel and mistreated Israel. But you can't do it because you are not a nation. It means there is a throne where a nation shall stand to be rewarded or to be condemned. It is called the throne of glory. Amen? Amen? Then there is another throne we find in the book of Revelation. It is called the white judgment throne. The white judgment throne has nothing to do with you, has nothing to do with the nation, but has everything to do with the wicked people that rejected Christ. Amen? Amen? These people will come from the nations, will come from everywhere. But that's not the time God is dealing with them. The basis of that is for rejecting Jesus Christ. The nations, it is for the way they dealt with Israel. Amen. And then there is another judgment seat. It is called the judgment seat of Christ. It's another throne. It says we shall all stand there that we may receive what we did in our bodies. Amen. Before that, there was another judgment prior to that. This judgment is where the Bible say, examine yourself every day. It is the present continuous condition of the walk of a Christian. Amen. Then before that, there is now the main judgment where we all stood as sinners. That was Calvary. So Calvary, then the present judgment throne, which owes, which you stand there every day, examining what you are doing and finding out what you need to do as a Christian. Then that throne is what will open the door for you to stand at the judgment seat of Christ and the glory that shall be unfolded at that place. So that the judgments that you as a Christian will not stand in. You won't stand at the judgment, the white judgment throne. You can't say him. Amen. <laughs> you are like, what? You won't stand there, or I'm too serious. Let me smile. You won't stand at the white judgment throne. Because that's not for you. Another throne you won't stand, you won't stand at, because you already stood at the throne when sin was being judged Amen. and you are judged in Christ. Amen. 
So that one you avoided by Calvary. Amen. But you are standing at a sum judgment from today. Examine yourself. Judge yourself. Modify. Amen. There is a time when you've read a scripture. Let me go ahead of myself. You are reading a scripture and you realize the scripture is specifically talking about something in your life that is not spelling a good thing. You know, you want to rush over that scripture. That's not the way to do it. The way to do it is read and get more references that talk about this condition in your life. Amen. When you maintain that in your meditation life, the Holy Spirit uses that to help you modify. Amen. When you avoid it, you are destroying the power that would have helped you. Amen. If it's talking about fornication, if it's talking about the lust, if it's talking about drinking, it is talking about anger. Go combine all the scriptures that talk about anger. Let the scriptures humble you. Amen. Humble before the scriptures. Amen. That is now the way you are giving God. Because someone go asked me a question. Pastor, how do we modify? Because I think the Bible say, modify the members that are on the earth. Modify means kill it. How do I kill it? Because you can go into the woods and fast. Empty without scripture. But if you are anger, you are only coming back with a person full of anger but has reduced. <laughs> but if you modify, you went with a scripture that addresses this situation in your life. You are helping yourself. You are cooperating with God. Amen. Don't run over the scriptures. Amen. Embrace them. Amen. Pride will make you run away from scriptures. But I want to give you a scripture about anger. It says, give me a scripture, brother Godfrey. Anyone? Sorry? Sorry? Anger rests in the bosom of a fool. Now the scripture has called you a fool. You're not going to run very fast. You say the Bible is calling me a fool because I've got this anger in my bosom. Read it more. Then you have got a Bible with a reference. It will lead you to another scripture that says, The wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Amen. Then you read another scripture that says, Be angry and sin not. You are combining scriptures addressing a situation of attention in your life. Amen. You are cooperating with the Spirit. The Spirit will now help you to modify because we said in Romans chapter 8, it says the Spirit of God helpeth our infirmity. Amen. You have to identify the infirmity yourself. He does not want you, you are asleep, and then you wake up in the morning, you realize your nails have been cut, and you've, you are very clean. No, you are. You have to identify that area and tell him right here, right here, right here. This is the thing that taking, is taking all peace out of my life. This is the thing that is making people to avoid me. This is the, the thing that makes people think we can't get a solution from that man. This man will just come here and explode the roof. God, that is the place. I'm feeling it coming, Father. God, I don't want to be a fool. The Bible calls me a wise man. But there is something in my life. You are now exposing it to God. And it takes a humble man to accept to be called a fool by the scripture. And he says that's really true. Amen. A proud man won't. And in any of your life, sometimes you'll find yourself <laughs> exploding in anger. All of us, from me here, up to the last man seated there. you find yourself upset with something. But when the Bible says to not sin, it is giving boundaries to that feeling. Yes. Amen. When it also tells you, do not allow it to stay for a long time. Look for way, pray for grace that you can handle that thing. Amen. You are now helping the spirit, cooperating so that the spirit of God can modify because you are not going back to Calvary. Amen. Calvary is already done. Amen. But now you realize, Amen. oh, let me not go there. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is a way to cooperate with the scriptures. Don't be the kind of person people fear. Even if they want to tell you something, they think, no, you will explode. 
done. Get some time. Humble yourself before the scriptures. Amen. Tell God that thing I'm feeling is not good. Yeah. Amen. I'm a Christian. I believe you died for me. Yeah. I know you achieved it for me. But the, the way I looked at that person was not good. Remember what Brother Manana told us one time? Brother Manana told us how uh, I don't know if he told us or he told me. You know, he tells me things. And he told us in the church. He was actually giving a flower for his mother. Came, it was the same day the mother had actually passed on and he went. We told him to talk about his mother and stuff. And then uh, Brother Manana was telling us he had been a little bit mistreated by his father at one given time. So when he was now working, <laughs> the father came. Said, Great, that was your father. Father came and was sitting somewhere and Morano came in and the mother was looking at Morano. And then he called Morano outside. He said, come over here. The way I saw you looking at that man, it's not right. This man, because of the few things he did to you, you see him sitting right there at the door. He just say, when you say, ha, ah, he takes off. Don't do that. Go get a shoe. Go get this and give it to him. Murano was like, no, Mama, you said, no, no, no. Take it. Give it to him. Thank God for the mothers. Amen. The mother was helping the son to overcome the spirit of grudge. A rat that is inside of you that someone did for you. You are wondering, how can I ever grieve such a person? Amen. That is fine to feel that way. Yeah. But do not sin. Tell God, I want to be clean in my heart. Nenyambemu. What is the word in Nikiluya? No, Murahud. It means someone who has been liberated. I want you to liberate from. I want to feel different. I know a person who doesn't have a grudge or a wrath, how he feels. Father, I want to be liberated. Father, I'm humbling myself before you. Take this thing away. You took my sin away. Take it away. God is requiring you to walk with Him. He wants to modify because you are fellow laborers with him. Amen. You are in the same field and God is involved in this field. Amen. Oh God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You will be challenged. It will happen from the closest people. People in our family. God says, I want you to modify. Amen. Some of you maybe were denied education in school. And then that old man or that old mama, they had the chance to take you to school. Someone had the chance to help you, they did help you. And God somewhere helped you. You are now earning some little money. And then you are saying, I'll just eat this bread in their presence. Don't! Take that bread and share with them. Amen. It says you have met the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There are people you feel, who you? God, don't do that. Modify there are people who have come in your life. You realize these people should have done better than what they have done for me. And then God ignores all that. He blesses you. You become a good person. God wants to tell this person, I've changed him. Amen. I've changed this person. Have you ever gone down to pray? Feeling so bad because someone did something wrong. And when you are praying, you are not even praying. You are complaining and crying. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then the following day you meet this person on the road. And then you realize now you are being tested in your works. And then you want to pass. If you manage to pass without greeting that person who brought you wanted to greet you and you pass, you will be condemned that evening you won't sleep. Those are the children of God. I'm not talking about people who don't fail. I had that experience one time too. Someone did something to me and I said I will never greet him. I will not, because he didn't do it privately. He did it before all. So I said, I won't do it. That was on a Sunday. The following Monday, it's few years back, maybe 20 years. Next time I met him in town, and the first thing I went and hugged him. He went and told another brother, you know, you know what I did to him was not good. <laughs> and this brother told him, he means there's nothing wrong in his heart about you. But when I went back home to pray, I prayed, I told God, you are weak. How could you allow me to hug this man who did this to me? But God will take you to places to tell you I have changed you. Amen. Things will happen in your life, then you will say, that is not me. You start crying. You say, God, thank you for changing me. He does. For 
from glory to glory, he's changing me. He's changing me. Amen. He's changing me. No, don't. <laughs> but very good people they want to start the ring to you. singing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, I wanted to say something now before we really begin is yeah, I'm actually beginning on my last notes. I want you to understand your relationship to God. Number one, as a sinner, as a son, and as a servant. All these three places I've mentioned have thrones. Amen. There are places where you meet God. The throne of sin where sin was judged, that is Calvary. How many of you have been there? How many of you have been there? Amen. Where your sin was judged in the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Is it going to repeat? No. It is done. Because what was achieved there has been done. The second, you are going to be judged as a son. That one is found in 1 Corinthians 11, 28. Paul says, let every man examine himself. There you are judged as a son. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Amen. You are already judged as a sinner. Now God is judging you as a son. Amen. This has to do with your walk. This is something that at the end it brings fellowship. Walk together with God. Amen. He didn't save you to leave you outside there. He saved you so you could walk together because of one word called reconciliation, which is a restoration of lost fellowship and friendship. Amen. So, you are going to be, you are judged as what? As a son. As a son. Give him a hand clap. Amen. Amen. You are judged as a son, not as a sinner this time. When the Bible tells you, examine yourself, and they say, for some of you who have not designed the body of Christ, some of you sleep. And others are sickly. Because of when God judges you as a man. And he says, if you fail, he chastises you as a father chastises a son. Can you read it with the good for us? So the result of this is chastisement. Chastisement is a sign of ownership. Oh, -ho. if God has not chastised you, you are not his son. But if you are a son and you fail as a son, God corrects you with the view of making you better. Why? He wants you not to fail at the judgment seat of Christ to receive your gold. Amen. So God is involved. He wants you to succeed. Read for the good friend. First Corinthians 11, 28. <laughs> but let every man examine himself. Yes. And so let him eat of that bread yes. and drink of that cup. Yes, go ahead. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, yeah. not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. We should not be judged. Amen? Amen. Amen. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. We are done what? Chastened of the Lord. So the next thing that takes place is chastisement of the Lord. And I told you over and over again, chastisement is a father-son relationship word. Amen. You cannot chastise a person that is not your son. So the father says, as much as I love, I rebuke and chasten. And the Bible says, do not fail when God is chastising you. He is going to make you more fruitful. And your fruit will be here and in the world to come. So the reason why God is chastising you, it is because he's preparing something for you in the future. He doesn't want you to fail. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, God. Amen. Do not fail when God is correcting you. Amen. God is chastising you because there is something that God wants to make you shine somewhere when you stand there. When he says, well done, my son. You did so well. My brother, I'll leave that part alone. Then, the scripture where we've actually found our text today is being judged as a servant. 
judged as a sinner, judged as a son, and judged as a servant. Amen. When you are judged as a sinner, I'll repeat that. It is not your sins that took Jesus Christ to the cross. It is your sin, singular. Did you understand? Amen. It is behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Amen. So Jesus Christ died there for the sin, singular. Amen. But chastisement is taking place because of sins. Sins committed by who? By a Christian. Amen. Maybe you fail to modify. This is good. Get it? Amen. You fail to modify. Thank you. When you fail to modify, you will be just son of the Lord. Amen. What do you say, man? Amen. You are supposed to modify. Point it to the Lord. Let God cooperate. I mean, let you need to cooperate with the Spirit of God. Amen. And after you've done the cooperation, God started fixing it because you are co-workers together with him. Amen. But you fail, he chastises you. Chastisement, when I talk about chastisement, you think that means you get sick. Not always. You could be chastised because someone can even stand and say, you mean this man is a Christian? I used to think this man is a Christian. My friend, that's a chastisement. When you go home, you realize, I failed. Amen. Amen. I failed. God is chastising you because he wants you when you stand at the judgment seat of Christ, you go away with gold. Amen. 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 So the chastisement is more, I'm not talking about you looking at yourself and saying, I'm getting sick because of that. God does not even make you sick because of that. But the Bible says, some are sickly. I'm just seeing what the Bible says, isn't it? Yes. Amen. And the people are chastised by God, they don't go to hell. No. They are being prepared for a glory to come. Amen. That's why they take this chastisement so well. They don't fail. They don't complain. They say, God, I thank you so much because what is happening in my life. It's a sign that you own me. I don't belong to everyone else. Amen. And those things will carry us and put us on the right track. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he's saying, you are judged as a sinner who committed sin that would have taken you to hell, but Jesus took your place. And then you are judged as now because of your sins. Something you did not modify. You did not correct. Praise the Lord. Amen. You did not cooperate with the spirit. So God is chastising you that you belong to me. Because Paul says, you are purchased with a price to not be servants of men. Amen. And God has put on you a sign of sanctification to say you've been put aside for only him. But sometimes when you go loose, God brings you back. Amen. Amen. He knows how to bring you back. Amen. Amen. When you are not fully representing what he died for, he knows how to bring you back. You know why? He is a father and you are a son. And God is interested in a father and son relationship. And then when we are going, we are dealing with God looking at you as a servant. Amen. 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 And all these things are good, my friend. The second throne of judgment where you examine yourself, that is what secures your fellowship. Amen. That is what secures sin you talk about with him. Number one, when you do something, don't say, oh, Calvary, no. Say, Father, take this away. I want to work together with you. Yes. And God can trust you because that is about stewardship. It is not sonship. It is stewardship. You've been given something. We shall look at it. God has not left you empty after serving you. Amen. He gave you another level of grace for you to function in your position to achieve what you were raised here for. That's what we call the ordained works. God has given you a measure of grace. Amen. No matter how much I try to say, no, no, no. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, the question I want to ask before we go a little bit further is this question. Are there degrees of punishment as well? 
You know, I was just studying yesterday to find out where did this doctrine of total annihilation that we one time believed came from. I realized that the Jehovah's Witness are teaching that uh, sin and people just be completely annihilated. They avoid the area where you realize <laughs> when you rejected Christ, there is something you did. When you believe the Christ, there is something you did. Amen. Okay, let's break it. When you believe the Christ, what did you believe? You believe what Jesus did. Amen. And then you also say, I'm going to do something for the reward. Amen. And then there is a person that rejected Jesus, the free gift that God gave to man. And there is, there is also what he did on top of that. Amen. Amen. How can they be the same? How can you say they'll be totally annihilated? There are also degrees of punishment. It's not like that. Uh, if you say there is uh, these people who didn't receive Christ, whether you did, you know that people will go to hell but they didn't drink. You know that? Yes. Because God did not plan to save man by works. God planned to save man by grace. And if you didn't receive grace, my friend, it doesn't matter how clean you are. Because the Bible says our righteousness is filthy. Yes. So you are not coming in the program that man is saved by. So there is a person who is very kind to his children, kind to the husband and wife, kind to the parents, a good citizen. He doesn't drink. When he leaves work, he comes home. You know that person who just got to hell? You see what's wrong with you guys? You think all that work, there is no work there. It is filthy rags. Yes. Because the work that God identified is the work he did on Jesus Christ Amen. and you receive it. Amen. Otherwise, Amen. you know you didn't get that because you are not believing. You've just forgotten. The Bible says, all are all are for all have done what? Do you mean to tell me even the person who was born and an angel came to the window? Yes, yes. And the pillar of fire came? Yeah. Yes. He's a sinner? Yeah. Yes. Is he a sinner? And the person whose parents were drunk and he also drank and did everything, you mean they're all sinners the same way? Yes. Then you mean a person who never drank, never did anything wrong. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to his parents, to his family, was a good citizen, never did anything wrong. And the person who drank, chased their family at home, from his home, they went away, he took somebody's money and they all got saved. They are the same? Yes. Surprisingly? Yes. 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 Grace, how is that? <laughs> <laughs> how are they the same? Yeah. They are the same because they all are sinners before they did anything. So God is justifying a sinner by believing the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not justifying a sinner by doing anything. Okay, somebody is saying, no. Then if that's the case, I got saved early. <laughs> I should have really painted the city red so when I get saved, at least. At least what? It was what we call, the Bible calls it dead works. Yeah. Blessed are you if you are saved even younger. Amen. 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 Because sometimes the devil comes and anoints your memory. And tells you, I know you are saved, but you know. You know what happened. And then you say, You wouldn't have that kind of a thing. Praise the Lord. Amen. But all are sinners that require a savior. Amen. That's why you went to the cross. Amen. For these people. Amen. And then, as sinners, this song we sing, I'm only a sinner saved by grace. I'm not a sinner. I was a sinner saved by grace. Amen. Only a sinner. And that's the problem with the sinner. They don't cooperate with the ministers, with the scriptures. That's why they sing, you'll be asked on that day, what did you do to me? And you'll go to hell. Now you see people are misinterpreting scriptures. You will be judged 
Go to hell because you didn't believe Jesus Christ. Not because you did this or you did that. That is not the basis. The basis is, did you believe Jesus Christ? That is it. Amen. So God is putting us on the same pedestal. We are all sinners. And he's saying these that did that and these ones that never did it, bring them on the same level. And saying, I've justified you. Not because you did, but because you believed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Godfrey, read for us Matthew 11, 21, Luke 10, 13. We shall just repeat ourselves. We are not going on a straight line. No, we are not. I know. Matthew 11, 21. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a scripture that tells you punishment are not the same. Just as the way rewards are not the same. Amen. Punishment are also not the same. Amen. You just need to flip it. Salvation for sinners is the same. Amen. Rewards is not and can never be the same. Amen. For not believing Jesus Christ, the judgment is one. You will die. But the punishment is it's not the same. Amen. Go ahead. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Verse 21. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you... Aha! He is talking about a city called Chorazin, another called Bethsaida. Mm. The city of Philip, Andrew and Simon. Amen. He's saying there are greater works done in this city. Amen. And then there are other cities down there in the Old Testament. Amen. Which cities are those? Sidon. Sidon and Tyre. And Tyre. These guys of Sidon and Tyre will be judged. Yes. Will be punished. Yes. But now there is another people here that have experienced a deeper manifestation of God than them. Amen. And he says, what I've shown you, Amen. if it was shown to them, they would have repented, they would be standing today. Amen. So it says, you will be judged, but yours is going to be more severe than them. Amen. That tells you that degrees in punishment. Amen. The way that degrees also in rewards. Amen. Amen. So you can't stand and say they'll be totally annihilated. No, don't run away. Yes. You will stay a little bit longer. Mm. Because even... <laughs> They will tell you, Daniel, when they went into the fire, they say, increase. The fire was already there. They say, increase it up to the seven. So there's a time God is going, you can't tell me you disbelieved Jesus? Kill those who believed in Jesus? When you get, got a chance to help them, you didn't help them? On top of not believing Jesus, you also did something to Jesus to hurt his people? You want to tell me? Your punishment will be the same with the person who just never believed Jesus. It can be the same. God is a just God. Amen. That's why he uses the word, it will be more tolerable yes. in Sodom than it is in Capernaum. Amen. Because Sodom and Gomorrah have experienced God coming there and bringing out Lord. But this Capernaum and the rest of the other cities have experienced God coming with the messianic signs. Amen. Preaching, teaching, and healing. Amen. Things that was not done in Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. How can the punishment be the same? Amen. It will be more tolerable for them than this. That decrease in punishment too. So you meant somebody? Amen. The way that decrease in glories and rewards, that's the way it is. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Okay. So that this person who came here, he was given a chance to do the right thing, even if he's not a Christian. To do the right thing to a Christian. He first of all rejected Jesus and he said, I don't care about him. And went ahead and did something extra to add on that. Can the punishment be the same? With a person who just disbelieved, they are all going to be condemned, right? Amen. But the punishment is going to vary. Depending on what you did, and the influence you put on other people Amen. at the same time. Amen. God is a just God. He says it's going to be
be more tolerable for those cities than your city. Because the greatest thing that Jesus Christ did is to come according to the scriptures and manifest the signs of the Messiah that had never been manifested before. Because we, we read, Brother Onesimus took us through that. The scripture that says, had I done what another man had done, you would have had an excuse. But I've done what no other man has done to disbelieve that is not just normal disbelieving. Is he rejecting Jesus Christ with the manifestation to help you? The judgment, can, the punishment cannot be the same. Amen. So if you look at the punishment, then what is another scripture that God for you for us? Did I give you? Yeah, I did. Luke 10, 13. Yeah. Luke 10, 13. Yeah. Woe unto thee, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and in Sodom, which have been done in you, they were, they had a great while ago repented. They would have repented. Yeah, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. So, amen, thank you. So it is like, what exactly did you disbelieve? Apart from rejecting Jesus Christ as a sinner, what else was passed before you and you threw your hands? Are we together so far? What part of the light of God came your way? Apart from saying, I don't want to be a Christian, I don't. Something came before you very real. Really substance of who God is. Maybe it was done by someone that has had Christ. You despise that on top of the fact that you were a sinner, born in sin, like all of us. Amen. You rejected God, number one. You rejected to be justified by faith. You said, I'm not going to accept it. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then on top of that, you did something on top of that. And you influence other people to do the same. How can the punishment be the same? It can't. The same way you believe the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. You are justified freely by faith. And on top of that, you went in and did something for the name of the Lord. How can the rewards be the same? Amen. Amen. How can they be the same? If someone sat back in this field where God is the co-worker with us, where God is a fellow laborer, and another one woke up and did something after receiving the grace of Calvary, God said, I'm going to enable you to do things. And he did something. And the judgment seat of Christ, how can you be the same? Amen. Is that true? No. Brother Godfrey, I just want to say thank you even for coming to church. You ask me, is there something to thank him for? Yeah, because I want to use him. That's the reason I'm thanking him. Read for us Titus 2.11. I want to show you some two, two levels of grace in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. But God will read for us. Titus 2 11. Yes. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that, that the grace that bringeth what? Salvation. Has appeared who? To all men. All men. So we have no excuse, whoever you are. Yes. That grace has appeared to all Amen. men at the same time. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Now, let me say this. That is not a normal statement. You know, sometimes we read in isolation, we think it's not. It is not normal. Grace did not come to all people. Grace only came to Israel. Yeah. Yes. That's why he said in John chapter 4, he said salvation belongs to the Jews. Amen? Amen? Yeah. But Paul is saying salvation, the grace that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Amen. We can access it so long as we believe. Amen. But there is another grace again. You want to see why God is determined you get gold. Yes. Amen. God is determined you get silver. Amen. He is going to give you something called a measure of grace. Amen. That is grace for service. Amen. Not grace for salvation. Grace for service, God is going to give it to you. Amen. Because God wants to give you an enablement in your life. Sure. Because 
is determined, Amen. you get something. Amen. Read for us, very good friend. You're wondering which scripture? Yeah, read for us. Oh, Romans 12 3, but I want you to begin Ephesians 4 7. We want to look now. This grace, how many of you have read a place in the Bible say God gave grace more abundantly? The grace to save man is abundant. Oh God, yes. you, you know that song we sing? Grace that is greater than all our sin. Yes. My friend, that grace is abundant. Amen. That grace is greater than your sin. Oh. There is no sin who can stand before God. God created something to destroy sin. It is called grace. Amen. And if you believe my brother, it doesn't matter what you've done. A sinner can be forgiven today, tomorrow, and another time. So long as he can believe what Christ did. Amen. Grace is abundant to all of us. Amen. Amen. That's why even the grace follow people on their, what they call what? On their bed. When they're dying. The last five minutes. Yeah. Amen. He was right there cursing and saying, forget all about it. And then there is that moment. You know what God does with this person? God does not show him hell. God shows him grace. Amen. Don't think people are like, before you die, God paints hell. And he shows your brother who died burning and the devil's burning. Hey, who goes here and this here and ah, God at that moment, he wants to pull a believer out of your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He come and shows you my love on the cross. Amen. That time maybe you are not even able to talk. Maybe you've closed your eyes. Maybe it's only a part of you that is rocking in the chest. And maybe the body is still warm. They're saying, no, it's not dead. At that time, my friend, you are having a conference with God. You are having a talk it over with God. When people say he died a sinner, they don't realize at that time, God sneaked his grace and he showed you, I loved you. And you responded in that condition. The grace of God is forced upon every sinner today. You reject it at your own peril. Amen. You know that man who died on the cross with Jesus Christ? Yeah. That man was not a thief the way Simon Peter calls him somewhere. That man called Barabbas. There is a man called Barabbas and there was another. These two guys were friends. These thieves on the cross, one of them who told Jesus, when you go into the, the kingdom, remember me. That man was a, that man was a friend of Barabbas. They were not thieves. These were rebels that wanted to overturn the government, get away all the Romans so that they can come back. So this man, because of that, because the people that died on the cross were not normal thieves. What kind of government is that? Someone still a chicken? You're saying, what did you say, a chicken? Why? How, how can I fail? The person who still a chicken is crucified. No! These people going to the cross was a capital punishment of the Roman Empire. Amen. And these people had committed something treasonable. That's why they put on the cross, he said he's the king of the Jews. How can he be the king of the Jews while we Romans are right here? And that's why they say crucify him. We don't know him. We, know, we have no king but is Caesar. You remember that? Amen. Because the claim of Jesus was too big. To identify with Jesus, you risked many things. That was a rebel. Although some, oh my God. So this man stands there. He knows he's a rebellious, they know he's a rebellious man. He stands there with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's saying, oh God. When you enter into your kingdom, remember me. <laughs> my goodness. He rebuked this fellow friend and tells him, my friend, we are here because of what we did. Imagine this person accepted what they had done. Yeah. We are here because we did ABCD. But this man is a righteous man. And then he turned and said, remember me. What a great day when the man was told by Jesus today. Amen. What did he do? He recognized Jesus took my sins because he said we are here for what we did. He is here for nothing that he did. He said, you remember me because I know you are going somewhere. Amen. Can you imagine this man was a believer of the kingdom? Yeah. Amen. Jesus told him today. Yes. I love it. That is grace, man. Amen. That is grace following you wherever you are. Grace will follow you. Amen. Grace is a warrior. Amen. The 
God is going to raid the camps of sinners and get the sinners out. Grace of God has no limitation. It is abundant grace. That's why Luther said, when I look at myself, I wonder how I could get saved. And you see, when I look at Jesus, I wonder how else can I fail to get saved? You are looking at the wrong thing. I'm telling you today, there is what Jesus died for. Then he gives you grace to move together to achieve his testimony in your life. Amen. We've read a place that says, God shall give you praise when God praises his people. You know when we are sitting and say, so and so stand up. And then you stand and God says, you see this man. I want to tell you about this man. On that day when you lack this, it is me who did it purposely for you. And you will not deny me. That time you want to cry, but there are no tears there. You realize God was leading you. That time when things went wrong in your life and you still held on, God is going to give you a praise. That's why he told Satan, have you considered my servant God? God wants people he can praise. It's not just you about praising God. It is something you have done that God is praising you for. It is not what he did that when he knew you would receive it. But there is something you have done. And God is saying, look at him. Amen. 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 I'm going to say to you. May God help me. May God help you wherever you are. God wants you to get it all. God wants you to get salvation. But he wants you to stand there. He wants to be proud of you. That's why we sang that song, Leading in the Fight. Yes. Oh, I want to see him. A person was there in your lowest moment when everyone gave up on you and you still held on God right there in yes. silent prayers. Yes. You said, You are my father. Yes. I don't know the can't see anything good in me. You are singing me. I love you so, God. God will be proud of you then. He will give you praise. Yes. Well done, my servant. It is about service. Have you been in a place where people give up on you? Nyenya mujajua. Una keep fika mali where people they are this one is nothing. My friend and God gives you grace you rise. When you rise you rise and you cry. You've seen people winning. People are going to run we we Kenyans we have a lot of confidence in what is her name the one who won the other day. This jovial girl what is her name? You guys coming from the same city, which will be a city in a few days, and you don't remember this girl. What's her name? Faith. Faith has trained. She has denied herself pleasure. When other people are going there to drink, he said, I'm not drinking. Because perhaps I know where I was raised. Oh, my sister. And then on your mask, and then she goes. And everyone is cheering. There goes a Kenyan called Faith. And everywhere we are, we are feeling that is Kenya. And it's not even you. And then you come, she wins. When she wins, she cries. Why do you cry? You are looking at the moments in your life. You are saying how. And people say you are a great person. But right inside of you, you, you are saying, I almost missed it. If I was to go another lap, I would have lost it. Thank God that was love. It's not easy. It's not something we are going to walk in. It is something the grace of God has to hold you through. I'm not talking to strong people. I'm talking to people who you do. If, if nothing doesn't move, it's like you are losing it. But you don't know what held you together. It is because there remains a reward for you. Keep on holding on. Give him a hand clap. Amen. I am not talking about people that don't do this or don't do that. I'm talking about people that something will happen in their life. And they're wondering, am I really saved? I'm only hanging on that sermon the pastor preached. Thank God he told me there is Calvary. He told me there is a sinner, there is a son, there is a servant. If I didn't know that, what would have happened? Paul brings out things that no one ever brought out. Paul brings up the judgment seat of Christ in the book of Corinthians. Judgment seat of Christ in the book of Romans. No one brought a place where you could go and get a reward. May you be inspired to do the right thing. Amen. Where God has given you help, help somebody else. Amen. You can't lose with God. You can't lose with God. Amen. Do it cheerfully. Don't do it like a commandment. Do it cheerfully. God loves a cheerful giver. He loves. 
There are things that God, you can do and God loves. Well done. Kitu nafamba kama mungu mungu na fry. You know, I was just talking to Shama and Shakani the other day about this man who who said that uh, he went to church and he had a hundred bob in one pocket and a thousand in another pocket. So when people were giving, when people were giving offering. He got confused. He didn't know which pocket had a thousand <laughs> and which pocket had a hundred. I can't say by the grace of God. <laughs> by his being clumsy, he pulled a thousand. <laughs> and he pulled a thousand in there. Just a thousand. And he said, and the pastor looked at him straight with hope. Some pastor So he looked at the pastor. And the pastor was like nodding. And then he came. He came and he smiled, but inside of him he said, No, Mungu I want to tell you this. That person is not a cheerful giver. I want to talk to people in our church today. Amen. That you had a hundred shillings and a thousand. Amen. And these are thousand shillings inside this thousand. You wanted to use your fare to go to Soy. <laughs> These people love you. <laughs> you wanted to use a hundred, a thousand shillings to fill maybe your gas. And then by normal human clumsiness, you put a thousand shillings in the offering bar. And then when you checked, you realize you have a hundred. I'm not going to tell you God is going to perform miracles. I'm telling you, come to me and say, hey pastor, I wanted to give a hundred shillings. But by mistake, I gave a thousand. Do you know what I will do? I will give that a thousand to you and take a hundred. We want the cheerful givers. Don't fear. Do you hear me? I give you a pastor. I'm not going to say no. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of God. This is one of those steps. No, that's not one of the steps. God loves a cheerful giver. I'm giving this. I'm giving this. Cheerfully, hallelujah, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. There is a time when your joy turns into strength. So, whatever you do, if you do it cheerfully, it will bring strength in your life. But when you get demotivated, it will not help you. It doesn't matter how many thousands and millions you give us. Why did Jesus Christ look at that woman who was giving right there and he see she's given all when the rest had given? He looked at the heart. This woman was giving with gratefulness and the other one was giving because it's a perfunctory. It's a duty. He's doing it because they have to do it. God doesn't want that. By the way, in the Old Testament, tithe was a commandment. Today, God is saying, how cheerful are you? How excited are you about my things? Give them. Amen. You know why? Because the vision of where you are going is clear. Amen. But if it's not clear, you are looking on the things on the wall. That's why many people today, their Christian is based on how big house they have, how big car they have, where their children are. There is something beyond that, my brother. And our eyes are open to the judgment seat of Christ. And the Amen. Amen. And I want to, you to pray with me. If I'm forgetting a scripture, tell me, Pastor. It was a time that God was so inspired. Say, Pastor, there's a scripture here. I want that. So that we go together. Say, Pastor, what about this scripture? That would be a very good fellowship. Is that okay with you? Amen. Amen. So good for you. You are saying, you said, read Ephesians and read Romans. Yeah, read that. We've already read Titus 2.11. What did we find about that grace? Universal grace. Amen. To those that be, leave. Not only universe that it will follow you, you have to respond. Believing is the response of the heart of the grace of God. Ephesians 4, yeah. 11. Yep. No, 7. 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Huh? Huh? Did you get that? <laughs> Whom is Paul writing to? Go to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1. 
So he's not writing to sinners. Yeah. But when he spoke about Titus 2.11, it was everyone that needed to be saved. But this one, Ephesians 1, 1, he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, Amen. by the will of God, Amen. to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Aha. So is the faithful in Christ Jesus. Romans, the book of Romans, it is the foundation peace work. Amen. The book of Ephesians is our goal. Mm -hmm. The book of Thessalonians is the end. Amen. We get raptured. Amen. Huh? Amen. Romans is the foundation peace work Amen. of our Christianity. Amen. Ephesians is our goal. Yes. In the body of Christ. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Thessalonians is our end. We get wrapped in the book of Thessalonians. Yes. We get saved in the book of? We get testified in the book of Romans. Yes. Amen. We are baptized in the body. The book of Corinthians talked about it. The book of Ephesians talked about it. Then we are raptured. Then some archangel comes for us. Yes. We shall have to come there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, Brother Godfrey, it is talking about the measure of grace. This measure of grace is for service. It's not for a sinner to get saved. That's why it's written to Ephesians. None of you lacks that grace. God gave you the grace for you to get saved. He gave you another measure for service. Amen. Did you get what I said? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now, in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 3, it talks about the measure of faith. This measure of faith is not the same faith we had when we had the gospel. It's another measure to operate the measure of grace. Amen. Good father, good friend. <laughs> what did you find in the book of Ephesians? Measure of what? Grace. grace. What do we find in the book of Romans? Measure of? Read for us. 12.3. For I say... Through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Are you seeing the Bible talks about the measure of faith? Amen. And talks about the measure of grace. These two, measure means it is limited. Limited to your call. You cannot achieve more than what the grace of God in your life Amen. has enabled you. And God is not going to require you to do more that, uh, than the enablement of that grace in your life. Did you get that? Let me repeat this. Amen. The grace that the Bible talks about in the book of Ephesians says, you are saved. Okay, Brother Godfrey, maybe we need to read it so that we can differentiate. Is that okay with you? Amen. Ephesians 4. Seven. Yeah, thank you. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Two eight. As eight. Ephesians two eight. Ephesians two eight. Okay. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourself it is the gift of God. Does that grace have measure? No it doesn't. That is the grace that has appeared to all men. That God would justify a sinner that believes. That is Romans, isn't it? When we believe that's our, our, our gospel. First Corinthians 15.1 What does it say, Brother Godfrey? Are you seeing yourself by grace? Amen. But God wants you to operate in your service. He gives you grace too. Amen. Aki. Amen. God is really determined. Amen. Brother Ben, how is your wife? She's fine. God. She's fine. Yes. We are here waiting. Amen. Then Ben gets here at 8. Amen. 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 And here you saying if it was me, you couldn't cut you up. Yeah. Ben gets here. I'm, 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 I'm trying to awaken you to special grace in your life, but sometimes you don't know. God has to tell you how to use that grace. Oh my God. 
Nisome haraka niseme hii kitu. 1 Corinthians 15:1. Moreover brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand. Amen. By which ye also are saved. You are also saved. What does it say in Ephesians you are saved by grace? But the gospel had to be preached. It was called the gospel of grace. Amen. The gospel was preached. It was the gospel of grace where you stand and where you are saved. If you believe that Jesus died, was buried, and resurrected, thou shalt be saved. What is that? Grace. Amen. Then he looks at you and says, this is not all I plan for you. Amen. I want to give you a measure of grace. Amen. I want you to serve. I want to make it lighter for you. Amen. Because there is another judgment seat of Christ. I want you to go home with something. I will give you special grace for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That same grace I want you to tap it today. Amen. By realizing what it is. <laughs> this grace for service is the grace that will make you do things until people say, no, that is not normal. It is grace. It is only you that can perform it. So when you build on that grace, you don't exploit. You don't maximize the grace God has given you. You are gifted here, but you are just saved. I'm saved. My brother, God has a right to ask, I gave you a measure of grace. What did you do with it? I saved you, amen. amen. But on top of that, I added something amen. because I wanted you to get something in service. Amen. I gave you grace for you to tap into that grace. Now, there is a place in the book of Philippians where Paul says, you are partakers of my grace. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about none of you is empty. Amen. Where is Arnold? Amen. Where is Arnold? Yeah. Oh, Arnold is here. Where is Arnold, my friend, seated between... That is uh, my friend Orion. All of these guys have been given. Now there is grace for salvation. It is indiscriminately given to them. Amen. But now the grace for service, they have got different measure. Amen. This one will do that. That one cannot do that. I want to tell you, realize this part of God with the measure of grace and serve him. Amen. 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 Did you get what I'm talking about? Amen. Now, this special grace that God has given called a measure of grace is what makes you get promoted. That grace is what makes you excel here on earth. Amen. Amen. Those are the natural things you have. It is your grace. So, kila mojena nasema kwamba, someone is saying, I don't think I have that grace. Who do you mean? God cannot give you grace to save you and fail to give you grace to serve him. He gives you a measure. And then he gives you a measure of faith to operate the grace because <laughs> praise the Lord. You love him? Amen. Amen. It says here. Amen. Do you know if not you can go to our degrees of glory? That does not mean I'm going there. Let me tell you, I must. It says in Ephesians 2 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Do you see how grace and faith works? Amen. Grace is given, faith operates it. Amen. How did you get saved? By grace through faith. So there is another faith again that also goes together with the grace. No? Amen. Is your mind okay? Amen. Amen. We are finding the saving grace here in Ephesians 2 8. It is said you are saved by grace. And it's through faith. Then we are coming to Ephesians 4, 7 and Romans 12, 3. Ephesians 4, 7 says there is a measure of grace. Amen. Romans 12, 3 says a measure of faith. Amen. Do you see how they are working together? Amen. So you need faith to operate your grace. Amen. Amen. And how do you accumulate that faith? God is faithful. That's number one. Amen. He didn't give you faith to ashamed you. He gave you faith to achieve something more important to you Amen. than just getting saved. Amen. There are works ordained for you. Yes. There is a way you must walk in. Yes. You can't do it as a human being. Yes. God gives you enablement. He yes. gives you grace yes. to be able to do it again. Yes. That God can be seen in your work. God can be seen in your worship. God can be 
seen in your standing. God can be seen in your strength. It is grace and faith given to God's children. Man of us is empty. Hakuna moja wetu mnyango tupu. Hakuna. I want us to go somewhere. This is good. So that we can look at this program here. You are not empty. None of you is. Some people say, I'm not talking about someone. I'm saying about you came to the earth. If you believe the Lord Jesus, Amen. there is special grace. Amen. And that's the same saying, brother, I'm traveling. Amen. I'm asking for traveling grace. Amen. It's not the self-saving grace. It is the grace of your service. Amen. God increased the, self the grace of my service. Amen. Maybe God gave me this measure of grace. But I've not realized it. I've only realized up to here. Amen. But all is given to me. But my faith will make my grace move. My grace move. My grace move. It is what you can be able to believe. God does not require from you what he hasn't given you. Amen. That's the nature of God. He gives you something. And a person who said God has given you something. It is you to dig deep inside of you and find out, God, what have you given me? They will tell you when you get to 45 years. That's what Sam tells us. When you get to 45 or 40 years and above, <laughs> don't be a jack of all trade. I did that thing you are good at and focus there. Because don't be scattered all over here. Yes. I want to tell you there is something you are good at. Amen. This is discovered when we walk closer to God. Amen. I've seen people Amen. that maybe the way they were born, Amen. the grace that God gave them has buried that special gift that will talk about God. Amen. People have struggled and come up. And said, I wasn't born this way. I want to tell you, it is not something that surprised God. You discovered it. It was already put in there. Amen. There is this grace that God has given you. God does not ask you to give him what he hasn't given you. Amen. God gives you and requires. Brother Godfrey. That's still okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible talks about stewards. I don't know where I've written it, but it's, it's no big deal. The stewardship here, the Bible is talking about. Jesus Christ in Matthew 18, 19. I want us to look at the kingdom people and see Simon Peter coming to ask a question. Say, Father, we have left this. What are you going to give us? He wasn't talking about salvation. 1819 or 1918? Or 2819? Can't be. Or 1928? I know what I'm looking at. Matthew 19:28. Yeah, 1928. Verse 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Was Simon Peter asking for salvation? No. <laughs> and Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. What is the throne of his glory? <laughs> Matthew 25? Yeah. Is the throne of his glory? Yeah. When he sits there, what is he going to do to the disciples? Read for us. Continue. Shall sit in the throne of his glory. He also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Ha! Huh. So this reward has to do with authority. Yes. Amen. Because our sour too. Yeah. Are we okay? Yeah. We are looking at the prophetic program. We see how people are going to be rewarded. Yeah. We didn't know there was salvation by grace. We didn't know there was the judgment seat until Paul came. Yeah. Amen. Paul is telling us this is not all. Oh my God. Amen. Then he says, wait for us, Romans 8. 8 what now? 8 18. <coughs> we are still going back there. Don't, don't forget this. Or you think we'll forget? If you think for God will put your finger there, we talk a little bit about this. Simon Peter, there was something that had not been given out. Who will be the judges of the twelve tribes? And 
then Simon Peter is saying, look here. Oh God, I love when the Holy Spirit is leading you to ask a scriptural question. He says, we forgot, we've, my friend, that is what they did in their body. We forsaken this, forsaken this, forsaken this. Yeah. What shall we get? Then what did he tell them? Read and finish it for us. Okay. Yes. Judging the twelve tribes of Israel, and everyone that has forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or fathers, or mothers, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are fast shall be last, and the last shall be fast. Now Simon Peter is hearing for the first time, Simon Peter that never went to school. He's being taught the 12 sons of Jacob will have judges. Amen. And these judges, you will judge a tribe. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now Israel will judge the nations. Amen. But now in Israel, there is the 12 that will judge. This is levels of authority. Coming in as a reward because of what someone did. Amen. 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 Are we together? Yes. Oh my God. He says, I was asking my, my children yesterday, how many judges did Israel have? It will take a good student to know. How many? How many judges? I'm talking about the book of judges. How many were they? There were 12 judges in the book of Judges. You know what I want to tell you? We understand why it's number 12. 12 stars. 12 constellations. 12 apostles. 12 gates. 12 foundations. 12 legions of angels. Amen. There were 12. One of them is Shamga, Tola, Ibsan, Samson, Jephthah, Deborah, Gideon, Sorry? Othinel. Othinel actually was the first one. There were 12 and the book of Judges ended. Oh my God. This is called the prophetic program of God. 12 judges. Then God comes, Jesus comes, and no one was even going to ask. I like spiritual questions. Simon Peter is asking, what are you going to give? I say, you know what? I'm telling you there are going to be 12. You see my throne here? There will be also other 12 thrones and so this throne will be the son of David. Then under the son of David, they did the 12 thrones. What will be the David, the son of David doing? The ruling the nations. You know why? Because he shall be the head of all the nations. Eh? Amen. Amen. Is good to read for us that? We are comparing that with what you write again in the book of Corinthians. Am I giving you too many scriptures? You know, you used to complain when you are getting quotes. Until people got tired. They don't understand that this quote is not even connected to that. But the prophet said it. Now the Bible says it. Read for us, Brother Godfrey. 19 is over. 19 is over? Yeah. No, uh, Romans. Roma, Romans 8. Yeah, Romans 8. 18. Yeah. <laughs> we are just doing well. That's good. Romans 8, 18. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. He's talking of a glory that shall be revealed. I may not even cover the whole thought. He says this present suffering cannot be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. That scripture works hand in hand in, with the second Corinthians. 417. This light affliction worketh for us exceeding weight of glory. That means a suffering in your life is connected to a specific glory. Amen. 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 You are busy writing, eh? A certain suffering that wraps itself around a certain glory. There is a relationship between your suffering with the glory that shall be revealed. Amen. Ah. Amen. <laughs> suffering don't come for nothing. They are connected to a glory. Amen. That's why Paul said, I reckon the present suffering cannot be compared. Why can they be compared? When they are put on the scale, the glory is bigger. Amen. Greater. Amen. It is light affliction connected to our glory. Yes. This one only happens not because you believe Jesus died, but because God gave you grace. 
you operated your faith. You moved in your position. There is something you did in your body. You suffered too, but there is a glory connected to it. My brother, this thing happened to me. It was raining in town and I was seated in the car. It happened to me. I said, I came home. I told my shalom. What I saw on the glory that is coming, if I talk about it, people will think this man is ready to die. Because he looks to be so ready. Because of what lays ahead. You have to get to a place where this thing does not matter. Amen. You have to get to a place where you realize every single suffering I'm going through something that no other person is going through. It's connected to a certain edit. Not the, what, not the word connect. What is the word in English? Corresponds. This suffering corresponds to a glory. Because there is this glory, that's why there is this suffering. Amen. If that glory was not there, this kind of suffering wouldn't be here. Amen. There is a relationship between what you are going through and what you are coming into. Amen. You are coming into something, that's why you are feeling this way. The Bible says Jesus Christ for the glory. What is it? That was set aside. What is the word there in the Hebrews 12? <laughs> Hebrews 12. Good from good to Amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, and you at the cross, despising the shame. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, the thing that inspires a person to persevere in suffering is the joy that lays ahead of him. Amen. The Bible says, for the joy that was laid before Jesus, yes. he endured the cross and he didn't want the shame. Amen. Despise. Him. Despise the shame. Amen. They stripped him. Yes. The Bible says, if we suffer with him, we shall reign with him. There is another life after this life. My suffering is connected to something. Amen. I'm telling the devil, I may not have it today, but what about the cities? Amen. Look, 1918. Amen. It was only simple when you can just say, today we are reading a message called Victory Day. Then have some quotes here, someone who's handy. Then someone comes and tells you stuff about, you know, in our family, the first one to die was so and so, and then you start crying. Mm -hmm. Oh, the message was very good because it's called the Mother's Day. Someone is just telling the life story about you, how so and so died, so and so. We are not talking about, we are talking about scriptures, man. We don't have a prophet we are looking forward to. We found a way to understand scripture is Isaiah 28. Hear a little, say a little, comparing spiritual with scripture. That's how we understand the scriptures. You're not looking for a prophet to come. There is no prophet Amen. that is supposed to come to make it lighter for you. There is no promise for it. Let me be over a little bit. Jesus Christ, when he came, the right, the true prophet prophesied about his coming and it was so. And a false prophet prophesied about his coming and it was so. Amen. Balaam said yes. in Judas Jerusalem, in Israel shall a star arise and the star arose. Amen. And Isaiah said unto us, a child is born, and the child was born. Yes. All the two prophets was right from a true prophet and a false prophet. Yes. Amen. But all of them had redemptive value. Yes. If Kamala Harris becomes the president of the United States, so what? Yes. Even a false prophet can prophesy yes. to the dot. Yes. But what is the redemptive value? You know, people don't know how supernatural is operated. Even if he became. Mm -hmm. Even if he became, so what? Yeah. My friend, we shall just have to. What you say, Kukiswili? Lazima to change to. Chai yetu na mkate na tukunye. Kila kwa pili. Yeah, it will not change. It will not change nothing. <laughs> and that will not be anything. It will be many other things. Then, in fact, you are bringing a problem to yourself. You are actually telling us. The others also must come to pass. What about the one who died who was supposed to see Los Angeles? Can you? So, because you actually troubling yourself, you are bringing even more. trouble. Brother, I'm telling you by the grace of God. Amen. God Amen. determined to give you something. You. Read for that scripture here. Luke 19. 19. 19. Of course, can begin with 17. No, no, tell us 17. <laughs> you know our Egypt. Yeah. 
And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. You have authority over ten cities. Mm -hmm. And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound has gained five pounds. And he said likewise unto him, Be thou also over five cities. No, just stop there. Can you imagine Jesus gives someone pounds and the way he uses the pound he is given authority over five cities? Mm -hmm. Eldoret will be a city on Thursday. Yeah. Someone was given a pound. Mm -hmm. He was faithful without a pound. He becomes in charge of the city. Yeah. He becomes the governor. He didn't work to be a governor. He only worked with the grace that was given. Now, if Jesus came in the prophetic people and asked them, what did you do with your ten? What did you do with your five? What did you do with your two? Is it too hard for him to say, what did you do with the measure of grace I gave you? If he's asking the prophetic people about the talents, is it hard for him to ask the mystery people about the grace? We shall all stand at the judgment seat of Christ. And each one of us, we shall stand there getting the praise of God in the things we did in our flesh. So Simon Peter, let me just read for you, uh, um, read for me to draw me 32 verse 8. I want to come to a place where we, yeah, that's good. Come to a place where we can bring it to. Is Jesus Christ, is God involved in both graces? Grace for salvation and grace for service? Amen. Have we found a new word? There is grace for service and faith for service? Amen. Amen. Did we find faith for salvation and grace for salvation? Amen. Have we found faith for service and grace for service? Amen. Are we finding reward for service and salvation by grace? Amen. Are we getting rewards because of works and salvation because of grace? So grace and works work together because you have a step and you have a standing Amen. Good friend. Yes. You're reading for us now? Deuteronomy 32 8. Mm. <clears throat> then you read for us Timothy 2 1 7. Deuteronomy 32 8. When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance. What does the word the Most High mean? El Elion. El El the possessor of heaven and earth. 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 When he did what? Divided the nation, the inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam. When he divided the nation, the inheritance, this will be this, this will be this, this will be this, and gave them the inheritance. All the sons of Adam, those are the nations we have today on earth. Amen. Yeah, what did he do? He sets the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Can you imagine? There had to be Israel first. Yes. Before there could be nations. Mm. If there is no Israel, there are no nations. Yes. And that's why the judgment of the nations is based on how they treat Israel. Mm. Amen. Amen. Now, if it's going to be divided, it means even in the millennium, we are going to have blocks. And there will be 12 blocks. According to the number of the children of Israel. The whole world devil is the greatest plagiarist there is. He plagiarized God's government. And then he said, I'm going to give uh, Cape Verde, Burkina Faso, Angola, and Mozambique. It will be Portuguese. And then Africa, Hapa, Tanzania, Uganda will be British, and you, and perhaps Nigeria. Then they will be French. They were being colonized by the people. But I want to tell you, you will see a better government in the millennium. You won't be here. Amen. It's now when God, these people have been sent out to evangelize the world. Amen. Bring the world to one Messiah, Jesus. Amen. And some people will reject it. The people that will reject that kind of rulership. That's what the Bible says. And he shall rule the nations with the rod of iron. iron. It will be Jesus Christ ruling the nations with the rod of iron. For someone to be ruled with the rod of iron, that must be dictatorship. Because they don't want to be subject, right? So they must be ruled by the rod of iron. And this nation called Israel is going to evangelize. Teach them the law. Amen. 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 Teach them the true God of Israel. Yes. 
This is the people the bearer of their blessing. That is Israel. And then there will be the 12. Let me not go there. That will be the 12, the 24. Jesus, the 12, the 24, as it comes down. Amen. Out of these nations, there will be people that will be here on earth in the new earth. Amen. But out of the same nations, there are nations that will test of the rulership of Jesus, but they will rebel. That's the Bible says, and the devil was released after a thousand years, and he entered into the nation that have also been multiplied on the earth to fight Jesus. Then the fire came from heaven and destroyed them. So there will be nations in the millennium that are not saved. Who will cross over into the millennium. Do you hear me? Amen. And they will be tested. And these are the people that will rebel. So there will be birth. There will be natural birth in the millennium. There will even be death in the millennium. Not all of them. Israel I do have been translated. There will be two types of people there. There are those who are eternal and those who are physical that will die. The Bible says an old man. Does it say an old man? The book of Isaiah talks about an old man and a young child. And at the same time, I want to say this. People have tested the rulership of Jesus. People who have rejected Israel today, that same spirit that have persecuted them all over up to where we are, that spirit will rise again. It will rise, it will enter into the nations. The way the behavior of the nation today, you see, Iran did this, Iraq did this, Lebanon did this. These are the people at that time are the ones that will gang up against the city and the Israelite. And they will be destroyed. They will be given a chance here. There are people in Matthew 25 who have treated Israel right and they are entering into the millennium. Some of them will get there and rebel. Are we together so far? Amen. I'm telling you there is something great that is awaiting all of us. Amen. It is a glory. Amen. Let me God give me grace to finish this part. Amen. When you stand there as someone saved by grace, you've been running because Paul Paul in 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 7, Brother Godfrey, maybe read 2. 2 Timothy 2, 3 to 7. I want to get to 2 Timothy 2. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier. So Timothy is being called a soldier. Amen. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Amen. That he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Amen. If a man also strive for masteries, yet is yet is he not crowned except he, he strive lawfully. He's talking about an athlete. Yes. Amen. Amen. He says this athlete, there are some rules he must keep. Amen. Now, this is not salvation. Amen. Paul is looking at him in the field of service. He is looking at him as an athlete, looks at him as a soldier, and looks at him at all. The next one is a, a, so, a soldier, an athlete. Go, go ahead. Just keep on reading. A husband man. <laughs> a husband man. And the husband man that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. He tells him, consider what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bounds, but the word of God is not bound. Amen. Let me read in the NIV. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, in trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. Amen. The hard-working farmer should be first to receive a share of crops. Amen. 
Reflect on what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Amen. A soldier, the discipline of a soldier, the dedication of an athlete, and the diligence of a farmer, all sums up what we are in service for him, not in salvation. Then Paul comes and says, I don't bang the air. He looks at himself as a boxer. He looks at himself as a race runner. And he says, run with the patience. You don't run to get saved. You don't train to get saved. You don't become a three to get saved. You don't become a farmer that knows the rain to get saved. These are the things that describe the second part of you after you got saved. Amen. You are an athlete. You are a farmer. You are a soldier into a hardness. Amen. Have you together thoughts so far? Amen. We want to come to the second last final thing. I want us to go and read 2 Corinthians 11 and I want you guys to look at that and really reflect on what Paul says in 1 Corinthians no, first, uh, Romans 8.18, he says, cannot be compared. And then in the book of Corinthians, he says, the light affliction. We want to see how light was it for Paul and what inspired Paul. My brother, Jesus Christ, when you see that thing that is said before you, the joy that is said before you, you get inspired. Good for for us. Second Corinthians 11. Yes, yeah, Second Corinthians 11. <coughs> Verse. I'm missing what I want to do, but no problem. Is it verse 24? Paul is talking about, and I don't have it here, stripes. Paul is talking about his suffering. Okay. 11 verse 24. Verse 23. As the ministers of Christ I speak as a fool, I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above in measure. In what? In stripes above measure, in prison more frequent, in death oft. <laughs> Verse 24. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. At it? Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. And he's calling it the light affliction. And he's saying he will he received how many stripes? Forty less one. So that is forty times five. Oh, give us the number. That is thirty-nine times five. What is that? Hmm. And then Paul comes and says, light affliction. He says the weight of it. Cannot be compared. What did you see, Paul? Amen. How, how many? 195? Yes. Oh, any student, how many did you receive in school? <laughs> the highest. <coughs> hmm? Who received the highest? If you was on duty and you are in study five and you made a mistake, five. If you are in eight, eight. He went, he did it for a long time, but it was not sustained. It could not be sustained. Yeah. So what have we found there? Paul is saying what? Eh? <laughs> Thrice I was beaten with the rods. Thrice I was beaten with rods. rods. Once. And then five times I was. <laughs> Stripes <laughs> was five times. Thrice beaten no. with the. 40 times five yeah. with the stripes. Yeah. With the rod, how many times? Thrice. Thrice with the rods. Well, and you know how many times? How many of them? <laughs> they were told if you are punishing or correcting, 39. So this one was also 30. 39. Eh? <laughs> Those in the Bible. Thrice I was, I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. At it? Once I was stoned, mm -hmm. I suffered shipwreck. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. Uh -huh. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Uh -huh. In journeys often, in perils of waters, 
in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the, the churches. churches. What is Peter there? <laughs> During that time, Peter is not there. He says, above all that, comes the care of the churches. Amen. So you have a pastor who has been smitten Ninety something stripes. I don't know how many roads he was stoned, then among false brothers, then shipwrecked three times, then fasting and hunger, then wilderness. wilderness. Then he comes and says, The light affliction we receive in a moment mm -hmm. cannot be compared. Amen. What did you see, Paul, beside salvation? Then he comes to a place, he says, Brothers, I've finished my course. Yes. I've kept the faith. I'm ready to be offered. He looked at his death as an offering. Yes. Not a martyr. No. He didn't say, I'm going to be killed. He said, I'm going to be offered. No. What did Paul see? Sister Yano, men are tired. We've looked at the suffering. And you've not known all those suffering when you stand there. When we all get to hell, have that day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Be holy. I want to finish. Paul, is this all you saw? There is no person who cannot see the judgment seat of Christ with this and he cannot give up. He will. Eh? Did you say how many stripes are those? Two? 100 stripes. 195. 195 stripes? And then how many roads? Then he was stoned in a place until they thought he's dead. And the brothers gathered around him. They wanted to bury him. And the Bible says he just rose. And then Paul, that's why he said, I'm speaking like a madman. Did you see that? He said, I'm a fool. When he started enumerating the suffering. But he said, this present suffering cannot be compared. Someone suffered like that, he says, there is something I'm seeing. And I'm telling you, God has to give you that vision. You have to see where. You have to see something beyond your troubles. Today. Don't give up. Amen. Listen to me. Don't give up. Amen. Paul becomes a pattern in all ways. He says, I labor every day that you may receive salvation with eternal glory. Amen. There is a glory. And that glory is, shall be revealed. Is, can I finish? Yes. yes. This glory is not going to come like a garment. It has got layers of glory. It will come to you. There is a glorified body, yes. But at the judgment seat of Christ, I want to tell you when we call, when he see called the general, whoever he is in the army, he calls somebody, brother Ogola come, and then Ogola comes, and this man has something good. And people have seen what Ogola has done, and then he takes that medal, and he pins it right there before all. And from that time, Ogola is not the same. He's been given an authority because rewards have to do with authority. And I want to tell you how you've managed your grace and your faith today will determine what you will do in the eternal age to come. It will be a governmental structure of God. The Bible says the saints shall judge the angels. Judging comes from the word krino. Krino means governmental duties. It doesn't mean to judge an angel you are right. You are wrong. We are not going to judge those evil angels. God is going to judge them. Yeah. But then the Bible says, you will judge the angels. It means you are, the angels are going to be put under you. Amen. 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 Oh, at the judgment seat of Christ, authority is converted to you. Amen.
Because you've been faithful in this, you get that. Amen? Because you've been faithful in five talents, you get five cities. If you've been faithful with the grace God has given you, it requires faithfulness. Amen. Then, Amen. what made Paul to continue with all this? He saw something at the judgment seat of Christ. I'm seeing the degrees of glories. Something that stands there. I may not have taken so much time on that, but we've gone through so much with you. Amen. Amen. Identify that grace. Tap into that grace in your life. Amen. Let that grace be realized in your life. Get to know God never told Abraham, give me Isaac, if he had not given Isaac to Abraham. God does not require from me what he hasn't given you. Amen. God does not say, just give it to me. I was being told in a church somewhere, I was told that in the Brazil. The sister was telling me when I was a wife of the pastor right there before he came here. We were in a church called Universal Church. And then they were supposed to buy a pastor something, a big car. And then they were, you have to, you have to give. And then this man will stand and say, even just have a life for your brother. Give for your brother if you don't have. Just give for your brother. Even if you have a word, just bring it. If you have a chain, call and bring it. That is fleecing people. Mimi now get kusu actually cheerful givers. I'm talking about cheerful givers. I'm talking about someone who's so cheerful when he's giving that it turns up into a strength. I'm not talking about duties anymore. That time of duties and commandment is over. We are now seeing something at the permanent seat of Christ. The Bible says, those who turn many from unrighteousness shall shine like the stars of the firmament. First Corinthians 15 says, every star has a glory that differs from another one. Stars are not the same. And you shall shine like a star. Your resurrection, when you get resurrected, you are only getting into a little glory. But when you go right there, things will be conferred on you. Amen. Then you realize it was what they got saved. Brother Ben sings a song. Ulifanya vema kunioko wa mimi Ulifanya vema kunioko Yes! When you say, Father, I'm reaping the best out of this. It is possible you'll have challenges in your life. I'm finishing. You'll have things in your life that will discourage you. But look at the prize. Forget the past. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God is going to confer those things upon you. Amen. You did not make a wrong decision. Amen. Influence other people. There is a crown that is coming. Amen. Then Paul said, I want us now to look at the suffering of Paul and I want us to see Paul now flipping the coin. Amen. He has finished 2 Corinthians 11. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 12. I want you to see what Paul saw. Listen to me. Lastly, see what Paul saw that inspired him. We've agreed with you. The things that Paul went through. No human being on earth today can outdo what Paul in persevering. What about those who died? You only die once. <laughs> you go there and then chop your head over and you're gone. Paul was not like that. Paul was, you said 100 or what? 195. And then all those things that happened, stone and left or dead, he rises up and he still follows Christ. Still follows Christ. No one in the gospel will suffer the way Paul suffered. Because he's a pattern. He was telling her, this thing is real. I looked at that and said, brother, you may have slept hungry. Let me use that as an example. Don't give up. Every suffering is connected to a particular glory. It's like a threat. Here is a suffering, but he's connected to a glory. Every suffering you undergo, there is something connected. Can I get someone who is strong today? I will move on. I will follow Jesus. Amen. Mimi ndo mfata Yesu. Na mwanda mabwana kwa lilo sana ya
to talk to Christians today, you've suffered. People have gone through stuff today and they still think I have strength to move on. When people are celebrating the materialistic God on earth, they have nothing there. The Bible says, where your heart is, is where your treasures are. I have a treasure beyond. I've got a home beyond the river. I've got a mansion, bright, fair, and something. I've got a home beyond the river. I will live with Jesus there. My friend, the Bema seed of Christ gives you a view of what we are going. If this earthly tabernacle will be dissolved, we have another one in heaven. It's a glorious one. It has stages of decrease. It is what I do with my life. I want to honor Jesus Christ. I want to pour my life as a drink offering before him. Brother God, if you are reading for us the last scripture here. Second Corinthians 12. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. Paul now, he's talking about suffering. Now the moment has come, he says, now I want to glory. He talks about the glory again. This is the thing that Paul saw there because the Bible did not have chapters and verses. It is one flowing truth. So chapter 11 is dealing with what Paul went through. Chapter 12 is now telling you, I want to glory now. And Paul is opening that for the first time in Christendom. Yes. No one has spoken the way Paul is going to speak. Yes. From Genesis to Revelation, Paul is going to bring something that no man has ever fathomed. Amen. For the first time, Paul says this. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. It's a vision Paul has had for 14 years. Amen. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Certain one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and had unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory. On such a one will I glory. Yet, yet of myself, I will not glory, I will not glory. but in my, infirmities. in my infirmities. For though I will desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he sees. There are things Paul would have spoken, but he said, someone will think I'm getting buffed up. Amen. But he said, he, the man went to the third heaven. Look for the entire Bible. Type the word third heaven, you won't get it. It's only Paul opening this part of the truth that was locked. This part of heaven that no man knew. And Paul says, I went there. I don't need any man to go there for me. I don't need any man who has just had a problem with near-death experiences to say I went past the curtain of time. Paul went there after he suffered. He said, I knew a man. I want to glory because of revelation. Why did he say, why this? Is he calling the third heaven a revelation? It was a sealed thing. Amen. It was never known to man. Amen. But Paul goes there and then he says, for that one I will glory. Amen. Even in my weakness I will glory. Yes. Something clear. Amen. God help you. Amen. God help me. Amen. Amen. There is a place. Amen. There is a place that we are supposed to go. Amen. We are going to pass terrible places. But I told you the other time, for you to get saved, you believe in death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. And for you to get to the rapture, you must believe death, burial, and resurrection. First, First Thessalonians 4.14. Read for us. Because, you know, you get to a place where people are imagining something spectacular has to happen for me to be raptured apart from what is written in, in the scriptures. Let us see how someone gets raptured. We already know how you get saved. Amen. By believing in death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. Amen. That's how you get saved. The yes. question would be, what will I do to get raptured? Go there and give us the material. First Thessalonians 4.14 yeah. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. If we believe Jesus died and rose, and again, rose again. Even so then, 
So them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. He's talking about rapture is going to be if you believe yes. Jesus died and resurrected. Amen. So shall he come with those who slept in him. For what reason? Amen. For this we say unto you by the word of God. We Lord. say unto you by the word of God. The word of God is not just a scripture. That word was not there before until Paul came. Amen. So he said we tell you by the word of God. It means it's something that has now been revealed. The third heaven has released something for the heavenly people. Amen. We tell you about the word of God. Amen. That vision we are getting there in First Thessalonians is not different from Second Corinthians 12. Amen. He's talking about the same place. Amen. But now, Thessalonians is showing you how you go to the third heaven. Amen. Here he visited. Yes. Here he comes up with a program. Amen. Is there seven thunder somewhere? No. Is there a rapture in faith somewhere? No. Is there something special somewhere? Oh. If you believe in the death and the body of the Lord Jesus, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead Amen. dwelleth in you, he that raised Christ Amen. from Calvary to be justified, to believe the gospel, Amen. to receive the Holy Ghost, Amen. to be raptured in the sky until the archangel picks you up Amen. and takes you, you stand there to receive authority Amen. because you are passing in a place where no human being can Amen. pass. Amen. Amen. The second heaven, sure. the first place that was defiled, will have to pass away for you. Amen. So that it can be a new heaven Amen. for who? Amen. 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 New heaven for who? For me. Amen. Amen. Paul went, why did Paul go there if it had nothing to do with you? Did Peter go there? No. no. Have you read where Peter said, I went to the third heaven? No. Peter would be go to the third heaven too. We were told to pray the kingdom of heaven. Come, come, come. Amen. We are told we shall sit on the throne of his here. Amen. But why would you go to heaven? For a heavenly people. Amen. For a pattern. After suffering all that, God opened to him. He said, Come over here. I show you the glory. He said, In this I will glory. By the grace of God. Amen. If I'm repeating someone's experience, Amen. God be merciful. Amen. You are not repeating an experience. It's written there for you. Amen. You love the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When the children of Israel were coming out, Amen. that's my last word. When they were coming out, God had given them the land. But before, someone already occupied that land. When they entered the land, they found there were seven nations in that land. But they could not fight that battle alone. An angel had to come. An angel has come to meet them. An angel came when this man Jericho, when this man at Jericho, Joshua, descended and he found another man stand there with a sword and said, are you for us or you are against us? Then the man who had come to meet them, he just has to be an archangel. Amen. Now don't get to a place where someone says, Godfrey is preaching, this is the voice of the archangel. This is the voice of the arch Godfrey. <laughs> Not archangel. When someone comes around and say, so and so is the voice of the archangel, is the lie of the devil. Yes, Michael himself will come with the voice. Amen. Why is he coming to meet a people? I'm finishing. Amen. Why is he coming to meet you? Mm -hmm. You see, you've been raptured. Yes. While you are raptured, you are going there to receive authority. Amen. You have not received an authority yet. Yes. But you are going to pass as you are on your way. Now let me finish by saying this, brothers. Heaven is not a hole. Heaven is compartments. Second heaven is the same too. Like this earth has got regions. We have got regions on earth here. Amen. We have got even those who live on the tropics. There are those living in different places. Are we together so far? Yes. There are different seasons on earth. Look at heaven as a governmental place. Look at heaven as places where people are and they don't have authority. And look at heaven as people who have gone there with authority to rule and to judge. A reward on the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. Then the angel came. When Joshua met his angel. What was the purpose of Joshua coming? They were going to dispose of the nations. Hallelujah. Yeah. They are going to get off the nations from their inheritance. So that they can rule and God will come and visit them right there. Amen. Then this angel God told them in Exodus 21, 23 or 23, 21. I've sent my angel before you. He will bring you to the place I promised your father. Be aware of that angel. 
And that angel came to give them strategies. He told them when you go to AI or I appear smitten. This is the way to draw them out of the city. I know there are people who are going to come to you. I'm going to, to, to bring hailstones. Other people I'm going to remove to bring hornets. Other people, this is a strategy to fight the Amalekite. This is a strategy to fight uh, the people of AI. This is a strategy to fight the Canaanite. This is a strategy. It was the angel to trick them on how to take over the land that was theirs. And I want to tell you, Michael, the archangel is coming with a voice. He's coming to meet you because you are taking over a place. There is a governmental place. I finished. Amen. I love the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart. Amen. If you do join me and clap for him. Amen. And I saw Michael and I saw that dragon fighting with Michael and their place was no more. And the place was removed and the devil came down. Why? He was removed from the second heaven. Amen. You are going there Amen. because that place has to be renovated. It has to be a new heaven. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The new heaven for the new people. The new earth for the government, the, the kingdom people Israel. We are going up to heaven. And the angel is coming to take care of you. Because the first thing to be defiled was a heaven. That was the first defilement took place. The Bible tells us in the beginning God created the heavens. Plural and the earth. Singular. And that's the end. And the earth was without form. And it was void. And the spirit of God moves upon the earth. But I want to tell you, nothing is mentioned about a heaven. Until Paul comes, he saw a heaven. He saw a place. He went up to the third heaven. God has a place for you. This third heaven, the way the tribes, the nation who are disposed of the land of promise, is the same way the powers in the spirit world are going to be shaken off, renovated for our people. Amen. There we shall reign. Amen. The third heaven is for God. Amen. The second heaven is the place where he, the devil defied. God is changing it for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give him a hand. Clap. The glory of the Lord. Nothing can be compared to what lays ahead of you. It's only the throne of mercy. I mean, is only the judgment seat of Christ that shows you there is a place you are going. It shows you this suffering cannot be compared. There is a glory connected to your suffering. If you will suffer with him that you may reign with him. Amen. There is a place. It's a heavenly place. Amen. That is even before the heaven and earth become one in the ages to come. Amen. Meanwhile, Amen. we are going to heaven. Amen. Israel will be down here on earth. Amen. Then the Bible says, in the ages to come, Amen. God is going to gather all things in Christ. Heaven and earth will be one. We'll never be people on earth and people in heaven. It will be all in Christ. Until that time, make use of the grace God has given you. You are not suffering. There is something God wants you to get. Love him with all your heart. You may, not be, you may not look like there is something going on in your life. There is so much going on. May God give it to you. In your grace, things that will sustain and support your life on earth. May he give you good health. May you give you promotion. May he answer your prayers. Because it's necessary for you on earth as you fight. On earth as you farm. On earth as you run. On earth as you box. May the grace of God go with you. May you grow into the grace that God has given you. The grace that God has given you, may it encourage you to keep on fighting. Say he has not left you. He is here with us. He is a fellow laborer. He is a co-worker with us. He is working with us. He is fulfilling his will. He wants you to take it all. The grace that brings you salvation. At the same time, the measure of grace in service that you may be accepted in him. There is an excellence in Christ. Wonderful is your name, O oh Lord. How oh, wonderful is your name.
remember your people are the planet of the river. Amen. That brother who has now gotten strength from oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. That the woman that has been divorced. Amen. Left but has now found grace today. Sure. Father, there is a grace given to her. Give there is grace. special grace. Amen. That's why when Paul was told. He asked God, told him, no, you, Jesus. my grace is sufficient. Oh, grace. It was not the grace of salvation. Oh, no. It was the grace to be fruitful in service. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you Jesus. There is nothing you require of us Amen. but to cooperate with you. Thank you Jesus. To work together, Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember Amen. our Amen. sister Vivian, Lord. Amen. Our brother Ben, oh Father. Amen. Our sister Beatrice, Lord. Amen. Our sister Rosalie, Lord. Amen. Our sister Marianne, oh Father. Amen. Our sister Zamacharias, Lord. Lord Jesus. Our brother Morano, Lord. Lord. Our brother Morano, Lord. Bless your people, Lord God. May they receive something, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bless us as we go home. With our blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You may be seated. You love the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.